guys, it's me Jocelyn. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do some transitions for beginners on a light motion. Now, like I just said, this video is for beginners, so I will be explaining where to move your keyframes, how to use your graphs, and yeah, let's just get started. So first things first, you're going to want to have your two clips ready. They can be photos, videos, whatever you're using in your edit. And you want to tap on the photo and then go to effects and then hit add effect. Now you can go and search for this, but I like to go up here and just type in tiles. And then I add those onto my photo or my clip. And then I just select mirror. And I'm going to hit these three buttons right here, or these three dots, and hit copy effect. And then I'm going to go to my next picture, tap on it, go to effects, hit these three dots down here, and then just hit paste. So that way, both your photos are mirrored, or your clips, whatever you're using. And I recommend you do this for all your transitions if you want all of them to be mirrored and like not have a black background when it zooms out or zooms in or spins, etc. You know what I mean? So yeah, after that's done, what you're gonna do, first thing I'm gonna show you for transition, sorry I didn't even mention that, is going to be a spin. Now a spin is probably one of the most basic transitions you can do, but it never gets old, especially since people have found so many different ways to spice up spins. Uh, I can make a video on that if you want, but that we're just gonna go with basic today. So you're gonna wanna tap on your photo and go to move and transform. Now you have all these buttons right here. You're gonna wanna go to this one with a square and then the arrows rotating around it. Now you're gonna see this. You're gonna wanna hit this little diamond with a plus in it at the very beginning of your first clip. That is called a keyframe. Now it's just the name. They're not complicated at all as long as you know where to put them. So most of the time you're gonna be putting, up at, putting them at the beginning and the ends of your clips. Well, for literally all the transitions. So that's how keyframes work. So once you have one at the very beginning, remember just tap it and it appears. Go to the very end of your clip or near the end of your clip and then tap it and add another one. Now on this one, this is where you're going to do the rotating. So this little spin thing right here, you can rotate it to positive 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees. It's whatever one you want as obviously they turn different ways. So just whatever way you want it to turn. I'm going to do negative 105 because I like a bit of an increase in how it turns. Now what I do is I hold down on the keyframe so it looks like this and then I just slide it to the very end of my photo just to make sure that there's like no uh, frames behind it and that it doesn't stop randomly. You know what I mean? So yeah. Now what you want to do, if your keyframe is like this and it's lighting up green, move over a little bit. Just like slide with your finger this way. That way you're going to be able to access your graphs. Now these right here are your graphs. These are what are going to make your transitions look nice and smooth so you're just going to want to tap it and if you don't know how to make a graph that's perfectly okay these four right here basically and motion's default graphs i like to say or they're graphs for beginners i also like to say because they are like they're great for people who don't know how to make their own personal graphs yet and that's perfectly fine so i usually stick with this one for the beginning of my transition and each transition well most transitions have a part one and a part two part one is this it's the in graph or graph one so I like to tap this for my graph one or my in graph. Um, I also like to drag it down a little bit, but you don't have to. I like to drag it like this just so it has a bit more like oomph to it, you know? And once you go to the beginning of your clip and play it back, this is what your spin should look like. Now, I did, sorry, I forgot to add this little red marker right here. You can ignore this part. Now you just tap on your second photo. And then you go back onto the little spin thing right here. You add another one of those diamonds or keyframe. Then you go to the very end of your photo and you're going to want to add another one of those. Now go back to the very beginning or the first keyframe that you have and spin it the opposite way you did first time. So the first time I did negative 105, now I'm going to do positive 105. And it'll be the opposite way if you did positive first and then now you're going to do negative. It's just the opposite. It's very simple. Um, it gets confusing at first, especially if you're new to editing, but you will get the hang of it. You got this. Now, like I said, if your keyframe is highlighted green or lighting up green, just scoot over a little bit, like slide your finger and then tap the graphs. Now for your graph two or your out graph, you're going to want to tap this one right here and you can adjust it any way you want. I like pulling them up a little bit and pulling this one forward. So this will be your final transition. Also, a huge thing you should never forget is motion blur. So just go back to that effects category, add effect, and then go to blur, and then just add on motion blur. And you can do that for your second photo as well. This just makes the edit look a lot smoother. 
And this is what your final spin transition should look like when it's complete. So I left on the mirrors or the tiles from last time that we added on together and just keep those on. You're going to want to keep those on for all of your clips. Now we're going to do a slide transition. So make sure you have your tiles on and your motion blur on your effects. Now tap on your photo and then go to move and transform. You're not going to want to touch anything else. You're just going to want to stay in this category. Now add a diamond or a keyframe. Go to the very end of your clip and then add another one and you can slide it left and you can slide it right. It's whatever way you want. I'm going to slide this first one right or the beginning right. And like we did before, I'm going to hold down on my keyframe and move it over to the very end just so I know that it won't move. Now remember if your keyframe is highlighted green, scoot over a little bit so it's not. So you're in between the keyframes. People get confused when I say that and rightfully so. It is a bit confusing. But you really just have to slide your finger over a little bit so your keyframe is not highlight highlighted green anymore. And then you just tap the graphs. And then you can do that exact same in graph that I taught you about. Once you guys get um, more used to editing, you will find out that different graphs do different things. Like it can make your edit, you can make your clip bounce, it can make it go backwards, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're just gonna use this graph, go ahead, but I'm going to pull it down a little bit and adjust it the way that I like to. So this is what the first part of your transition should look like. Now go on to your second clip. Make sure you have your tiles and your motion blur. Now go back onto that move and transform and then add another diamond or keyframe at the beginning and then one at the very end. Now go back to your one at the beginning and slide your photo opposite the way you did the first time. So since I slid mine right the first time, I'm going to slide it left now, just like this. Also, if you slide it too far, it will eventually cut off, like the tiles will cut off. So I just wanted to warn you on that. Just try to make sure you slide it about the same distance you did for your first clip. Now make sure your keyframe isn't highlighted green, and if it is, scoot over a little bit. <laughs> I like to say scoot over a little bit, it's kind of funny to me, whatever. And then you go to your graph, and then you select this little out graph or graph 2 right here. And you can adjust it any way you'd like, or you can just keep it. I like to adjust mine. And this is what the final result should look like for the slide. This next transition is going to be by far the most popular um transition in the editing community i like to think because it's in every single edit whether you want it to be or not because most people use it it is a zoom in and zoom out now these kind of correlate with each other like if you're gonna do it one way on the first clip or like you know what i mean i don't know how to explain it it's like on your first clip you're gonna zoom in and then on the second clip it's gonna zoom out but if you wanted to do zoom out you're gonna zoom out on the first clip and then it's gonna come and zoom back in on the second clip You'll see what I mean because it does sound kind of confusing, but you can make a zoom in and zoom out um, doing the exact same steps, just opposite directions. Do you know what I mean? Kind of like how you can slide left to right if you slide them in different directions for a transition. I'm making this much more complicated than it is, but I'm just trying to explain it, right? So once again, make sure you have your tiles and your motion blur on, and then go to move and transform, and then go to this little square with an arrow and a little box inside of it. And this is going to be your zoom in panel, I like to say. It's just like the panel where you can zoom and control your zooms, whatever. Um, you can ignore this for now. This can be used <laughs> in another time when you're a little bit more used to the app, since I'm assuming most people watching this are beginners. So you're going to want to add that keyframe right at the beginning, like I said, and then go to the very end of your clip. You can tap this to get to the end of your clip if you have beats, like I added beats, like the little red marker. And then add another one of those. And we are going to do a zoom out this time. So you're going to want to zoom it out this way. You're going to want to slide it to the right, just like this. So your photo is zooming out. But if yours is zooming in, that's perfectly okay. If you wanted to do a zoom in instead, that's fine. Now make sure you your keyframe is not highlighted. Go in between it. And then just add on that in graph I've been telling you about. Forgot to adjust my keyframe, so just let me do that real quick. And this is what the beginning of this transition should look like. Now go on to your second clip. Once again, make sure you got your tiles and your motion blur. Go back on to that zoom in panel. Add two keyframes, one at the beginning and then one at the end. Then go back to your one at the beginning and then zoom it in like this. So do you know how it was zoomed out the last time? Now you're going to want to have it zoomed in. Make sure your keyframe isn't highlighted and if it is, move over a couple frames. And then go back to the graph and then select this out graph right here and adjust it any way you want or you can leave it, like I said, your personal preference. And this is a zoom out. It's a bit laggy. Um, so if your app lags, don't worry. It's probably not your phone. It just lags a lot in general. But the outcome is perfect. So don't worry about it. 
And if you wanted to do vice versa, basically you just switch the transitions over. So if you wanted to do a zoom in, you're going to want to zoom in this first clip and then zoom out this second clip. And this is what the final result looks like. I'm going to show you where it doesn't look so laggy. And this is the final result. And yeah, that was it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment down below any tutorial requests you guys may have. Um, I really hope this video helped some of you guys out and helped you learn a few things. Um, mm -hmm. I love you guys. Bye.